Buffalo City, Olen Duncan Village, Olom Tanzane, Olo East London, Siababona Nero Tunzana La Semum, El Coyo Apanam Sanje. This is a metro of Buffalo City. Um, um, that uh, on a month, 
Amtal. As we speak, Abantu of Buffalo City, they don't have water. They were told that they must go and buy a jig, Bagaleli jig, for them to drink the water. Forward to one million members in December. Forward. Forward to one million ground forces by December. Forward. Manza. Away. Two. Viva the Commander in Chief. Viva. Viva the year of the branch. Viva. Manza. Now, fighters, what distinguishes the EFF? from all other organizations is that we believe in the power of the state. We believe in the power of political power to use that political power to take over economic power to give to our people. That is the major difference between the economic freedom fighters and all other organizations. You might have seen when the State of Nation address was given that Ramaphosa went to Parliament and said that we all know that government does not create jobs, business does. And the Democratic Alliance, the Freedom Front Plus, and all these other Mickey Mouse organizations were applauding him. They were clapping hands for him because all of them except the EFF believe that it must be white people it must be white businesses that must create jobs that is why we say at the formation of the EFF nine years ago that political power without economic power is meaningless we are the only organization that places at the center of our existence the economy that is why we are called the Economic Freedom Fighters. There is no any other organization that places at the center of its existence the importance of the economy. The EFF places at the center of our existence the economy. But we also appreciate that before we take over the economy, there are certain stages that we must go through. What are those stages? One is that we must have a dependable organization on the ground. We must have branches of the EFF. We must have revolutionary activists and members of the EFF who understand its mission. That is the first stage. Before we take the economy, we need the primary base of the organization to be solid, to be dependable, to be a reliable instrument in the hands of our people. We first need an organization. And why do we need an organization? It's because it is through the organization that will be able to mobilize the masses behind the struggle for economic emancipation in our lifetime. So the first stage is organization. The second stage is to mobilize the masses. The third stage is to take over political power. Political power you take through different means. You win political power by contesting elections. But if there is no space for you to contest elections, you can take over political power through violence, through a mass overthrow of those that are refusing to give you the political power, of those who are refusing to allow a democratic space for elections to happen so that they can leave power. We believe that with control of the economy, 
with control of political power, who can do what are the fundamental cardinal pillars of the EFF. What are these cardinal pillars? We have got the principles, the non-negotiable pillars. The reason why the EFF exists is to fundamentally achieve seven things. These seven objectives or seven aims are called cardinal pillars, non-negotiable cardinal pillars. It will not be possible in any EFF conference to change what the EFF stands for. It will need another founding conference of a different organization to change what we stand for. We need an organization, we need the masses, we need political power, we need to take over the economy. But that must happen within a certain context. We are going to talk today patiently because this is a meeting of the EFF and all meetings of the EFF in the year 2022 must speak about the political program of the EFF. Cardinal pillar number one in the EFF of what we seek to achieve is to take back the land. It's land expropriation without composition. The reason why the land is at the center of our agenda is because we are nothing without the land. When we speak about the land, we do not just speak about the surface that has been neglected, that is not being used. When we speak about the land, we speak about agricultural land. We speak about the land that has got minerals. We speak about the land that must create space for people to have decent housing. We speak about the land that must build factories to employ millions of people. We speak about the land that must be used for recreational purposes. We speak about the land that must be used for sporting purposes. We speak about the land that must be used for religious purposes. This is the land which we say must be under the custodianship or caretakership of the state on behalf of the people. When we say the land must be under the custodianship of the state, we mean that government must control the allocation of land to all South Africans. And at the end of the allocation of land, land ownership and control in South Africa must reflect the demographics of South Africa. Meaning that if us as black people, as black Africans, are 80% of the population, 80% of the land in South Africa must be owned by black people, by us as Africans. Currently, the white minorities are the ones who own the land. They own more than 80% of South Africa's land, whether it's for agriculture, for residential purposes, whether it's for mining purposes. That is what we seek to change as the economic freedom fighters. So our number one priority is Umslaaba, that we must give the land to our people so that we can self-reproduce and cultivate the land to benefit all the people. The second most important pillar in the struggle for economic freedom in our lifetime is nationalization of mines, banks, and other strategic sectors of the economy. Unlike the ANC and those who are in power now, we do not believe in privatization. We believe in government's ownership and control of strategic sectors of the economy. We believe in government's ownership of the mines. And why do we want to own the mines? We know that now when people are owning the mines privately, they just extract the mineral resources. They take our diamonds, our gold, they take our platinum and send them to the sea and take them to other parts of the world, to America, to Europe, 
and then those products come back as finished goods and services. So if we were to take over the mines under the ownership of the state, we were going to locally beneficiate them. We were going to make what is used for by platinum. We were going to manufacture the car parts that are manufactured by platinum. We were going to develop energy cells that come from platinum. We were going to use diamonds much more purposefully. And in the process of doing so, we were going to create jobs for our people. The reason why we do not have jobs is because we take all our minerals and take them to America and we take them to Europe. If you go to the central bank in a, England, there is tons and tons of gold there. And there is not a single gold mine in England. They have taken our gold, they are still in ownership of it. They continue to take it. That is why we are saying that we need to nationalize the mines so that we can locally beneficiate and add value to all the minerals in the process grow the economy and, and, and engage in other industrial process and manufacturing activities. We long overdue have to create a state-owned bank. There in Cape Town in Parliament, we as the EFF introduced a law which said that now it is permissible, it is allowed for government to own a bank. But the ANC, the ruling party, is refusing to create a state-owned bank. Post Bank is not a bank, it's a toy bank. Because it is not allowed to engage in activities which the other licensed banks are engaged in. But also we need to keep the strategic sectors of the economy in the hands of the state. What are the strategic sectors of the economy? Is sectors like Transnet. Transnet must never be privatized. It's companies like ESCOM. ESCOM must never be privatized. Those are the strategic sectors. It's like South African Airways. It must never be privatized. Because outside of just making profits, what South African Airways can do in South Africa is to travel to many parts of the world and advertise the tourism opportunities here in South Africa. And thereafter bring as many tourists as possible to South Africa. So the value of SAA is not just the quick profit. It's about the value that it can add to the economy through tourism and making sure that people get to different parts of the country and to the world much more conveniently. Those are sectors that we cannot leave in the hands of the private sector. The private sector only exists to achieve profit. If you, have, you give ESCOM to the private sector and then people are unable to pay, they are going to switch off electricity for all the people. But once ESCOM is in the hands of the state, we will know that the people that do not have electricity must be given electricity. The poor people must not be forced to pay for electricity. But also now because there is this issue of renewable energy, of trying to cultivate the wind and the sun to turn it into electricity, we need to have a division of energy generation that is owned by government, by the state, to generate as much electricity as possible for our people. We cannot let electricity distribution to be in the hands of the private sector. So that is what we mean in Cardinal Pillar number two when we say nationalization of mines, banks and other strategic sectors of the economy. Cardinal pillar number three speaks to building state and government up capacity, which will lead to the abolishment of tenders. What do we mean about that? We are observing the fact that currently, 
government has got no capacity to deliver services directly. They cannot even write letters to members of a municipality. They cannot do anything. If government wants to build a school, they have to get a tender person somewhere to build on their behalf. If they want to build the road, they have to get a tender person to do so. If there's a school that is burnt down, if there's a school that is damaged, they have to advertise a tender to repair that school. We are saying that government must directly employ people to take care of all the functions of the state and not rely on tenders. That is why in Johannesburg, in Nelson Mandela Bay, in Tuane, when we were there from 2016 to 2021, we as the EFF began to say, let us internalize state capacity to perform basic functions. In the process of doing that, we must move towards the abolishment of tenders. At the center of corruption in municipalities, in the provincial government, in national government is tenders. That is why even when there's a basic thing here in the Eastern Cape, here in Buffalo City, of organizing a funeral, they go and get a tender person to organize a funeral. And in the process, steal money of organizing a funeral. Every time they do that because that is what they rely on. There is no construction tender that has been issued here in the Eastern Cape, here in Buffalo City, in all the municipalities, without those that have received the tender paying bribes to politicians. The reason why these politicians of the ANC, Oskamabuyane, Lubabal, all of them have got millions of friends is because they take bribes to, to give tenders to their friends. Even when they leave here, they go around in Johannesburg. They go around looking for other tenderpreneurs to say that our rule this side is that if we give you a tender, you must give us 20% of all the monies that we give you. We have to abolish that system so that it is our people that benefit from the service delivery that is conducted by the state. The fourth pillar, comrades, is free quality education, health care, houses, and sanitation. We need to give free, free education to all the people, not just in primary and high schools. We must give free education, even at a tertiary level. The other pillar that we speak about is called, in number five, massive protected industrial development to create millions of jobs. We say there has to be the building of factories and industries that must manufacture goods and services here in South Africa. As things stand, everything, almost everything else that we use in South Africa comes from other parts of the world. The clothes that we wear, majority of them come from China. Whether you bought in Woolworth or Edgar's or whichever store, almost all the clothes that we wear are coming from China. Imagine how many jobs we're going to create if we're making our clothes. Because all of us who are here in South Africa today, 60 million of us need clothes every day. Even if we're producing 50% of those clothes, we were going to create a lot of jobs for our people. That is why we say we need protected industrialization. Protected in the sense that we are not going to allow the Chinese companies and Chinese textile to compete with the textile that is made here in South Africa. It is not only clothes. Everything else that we use every day, the household appliances, all of them come from other parts of the world. 
Just how many fridges do we have in South Africa? Just how many washing machines? How many microwaves? How many television sets? How many cell phones do we have in South Africa? More than 200 million cell phones in South Africa. None of those are made in South Africa. Imagine even if we're making 50% of that here in South Africa. We train our people and feed them into factory lines that must manufacture all these goods and products. That is what we want to achieve as the EFF. Let us build industries. Let us manufacture our own cars. There is a skill in South Africa to build cars. What we do currently in Mercedes-Benz here in East London is to assemble the cars. We are not manufacturing them from scratch. We just are assembling them. And the reason why they come and assemble the cars here in South Africa is because they want to gain access to the American market. So South Africa and many other African countries have got an agreement with America, the United States of America, that if you bring cars to us as finished products, you are not going to pay tariffs or tax. They are just going to enter for free. But the cars that come from Europe, when they are taken to America, they have to pay tariffs and taxes. Then the Europeans say, let us manufacture cars in Germany. Then the Japanese say, let us manufacture cars in Japan. But we'll go and assemble them in South Africa so that we can gain an easy access to the American market. The reason they are here is not because they are investing to create jobs for our people. They are doing that for their own profit motives. We have to build internal capacity to manufacture our own cars and everything else that is needed. And there is no one who can tell us that South Africa does not have capacity to manufacture its own cars. We have got a state-owned company called Dinel. Dinel has been for many years manufacturing military vehicles, cars that are used for war purposes. Dinel has been manufacturing fighter jets locally. With that capacity, which is owned by the state, we can manufacture our own cars. And then we start by saying that it is compulsory for government, for the state and municipalities, for all police stations to buy locally made cars. In that way, we are guaranteed to have millions of jobs for our people. That is what this part of the manifesto of the EFF speaks about. The other pillar speaks about massive development of the African economy and advocating for a move. We can never resolve the immigration question in South Africa if we are not engaged in the deliberate development of Lesotho, of Botswana, of Namibia, of Malawi, of Zambia, of all the countries that are closer to us. If we are just going to focus on the industrialization and economic development of South Africa without the purposeful development of our neighbors, what will permanently happen will be migration that will not be managed coming into South Africa. And like they are doing now, the capitalist will take advantage and only employ people that do not have proper documents. Doing political work is not very difficult. Sometimes your conduct, your behavior can be political work. Just the manner in which you conduct yourself can be a means to convince others to join the EFF. If you are seen to be helping the community where you come from, people are going to ask this person where does he come from and then your actions are going to speak on your behalf and therefore on behalf of the organization people are going to believe you
but also your conduct can keep people away can make people not to love the EFF because of your misconduct. Yeah. If you wear EFF t-shirts and go and drink alcohol yeah. and start assaulting people, yeah. they will say this is the EFF, it's a violent organization. Yeah. If you do not greet people, you are rude all the time. Yeah. If you are a counselor, people are asking for basic assistance. There's a person who is sick next door. Please use your transport to take them to the nearest clinic. And then you say you are busy with nothing. They'll say, what kind of organization is this? Our conduct, the manner in which we interact with communities must inspire confidence amongst ordinary people to want to join the EFF. The question that must never be asked to the EFF in 2024 when we go to general elections is where were you throughout the other years? There must never be a question to an, any activist of the EFF of where were you? Why are you only coming now? That question must never be asked to any EFF activist. Because EFF branches, all their VT structures must from time to time engage in programs and activities that will make sure that there's visibility of the organization. That will make sure that there is work that impacts on the lives of our people. So that we are not asked, why are you only coming now? The people must be asking, where is the EFF during elections? Yeah. Not the other way around. The ANC is below 50% nationally. They've got no history and capacity of recovery every time they decline their votes. When they lost Cap Metro for the first time, they lost with a very small margin. Go and check the results of the ANC in Cap Metro today. It's less than 23%. That is how they are. They fail to gain stability when they do not have government. We can make progress, we can take them out of power. Where the people of South Africa have been very patient with them. And they only come 28 years later to say, yes, we have promised you jobs, we have promised you this and that. But now we admit that government cannot create jobs for you. That is the message that you must go into the ground to tell our people. That here is an organization that you have entrusted for close to 30 years. They are saying that they cannot do anything for you. 11 million unemployed people who do not have anything else. How should they live? You have, you have refused to give them land. You say you can't create jobs for them. You are not giving them anything. How should the 11 million people live? Where should they get the food? How should they go to school? How should they take care of their children? What should they wear? That is the message that we must go and communicate our, to our people. Forward. Forward to one million ground forces. Forward. Forward. Come on, Away. Two. Thank you very much. Check this out. Today, this is a program you launch a one million membership towards the, the, the EFF. Nabandu, about one million. But a person keeps to target 200,000. Nabandu, it's a full number join, but it's active the EFF. For the Agadam Tanje, this is invited to Buffalo City, few branches, because we said El Zinia, they must focus on the work. We are happy with the, the, the attendance of today. All the 25 branches, I said Buffalo City, Dr. Person, no secretary, were represented. So the message is going to reach our members. We want to grow the organization. In the city every time after elections, 
Ia fai mi buto. Ia fai exivisi. Ia ubu ya mtawa sonde li elections. Wogu sitate ngi shape CEFF. We want our people to participate on a daily basis. In terms of life changing and situational changes and the growth of the EFF going forward. So that's why we're here. Salo, if we don't know at this current point, we target 200,000 up at Eastern Cape now. And uh, you are sitting at where? Uh, well, in well, we, in, the, in terms of the last report, yes. we were sitting at 59,000. But the contribution of Sifunangoku was starting from zero. So we are recruiting people. Even if you had joined before, you are going to now be allowed to join again. And we count you and count you as part of the 200 membership that we are looking for. So we, we are able to reach that. It's possible.